My goodness. This will be take three. First time I failed. Second time I failed. Third time mom interrupted me at Percy and the Signal. But I'm back now. And if you noticed me bobbing the camera up and down, then you would have noticed a box, a large mogul, a smaller mogul that seems to be staring into my soul as we speak. Which is basically what I said last time in a nutshell, my goodness. I'll just be reading it in my normal voice. Last time I tried reading it in Edwards, it was a chore. And cars and all, all terminology will be said in proper UK terminology. I won't be saying cars or wagons. I'll be saying trucks and tankers. How they should be. Toby and Henrietta were enjoying their new job on the island of Sodor. But they do look old-fashioned, and uh, didn't need new paint. James was very rude whenever he saw them. Yeah, what dirty object. At last, Toby lost patience. Joined? He asked. Why are you red? I'm a splendid red engine, replied James. Ready for anything. You never see my paint dirty. Oh, said said Toby innocently. That's why uh, you once needed boot laces to be ready, I suppose. James went redder than ever and snorted off. It was such an insult to be reminded of the time a boot lace of all things had been used to mend a hole in his coaches. At the end of the line, James left his coaches and got ready for his next train. It was a slow goods, stopping at every station to pick up and set down trucks. James hated goods trains. Dirty trucks from dirty siding. Yeah. <laughs> Starting with only a few, he picked up more and more trucks at each station until he had a long train. At first, the trucks behaved well, but James bumped them so crossly they were determined to get back at him. Presently, they approached the top of Gordon's Hill. Heavy goods trains halt here to set their brakes. James had had an accident with trucks before and should have remembered this. Wait, James, wait, said the driver. But James wouldn't wait. He was too busy thinking what he would say to Toby when the next met. The truck's chance had come. Hurrah! Hurrah! They laughed. And banging their buffers, they pushed him down the hill. On! On! He had the trucks. I've got to stop! I've got to stop! <laughs> Groaned James. Disaster lay ahead. Something sticky had splashed all over James. He had run into two tar tankers and was black from smoke box to cap. He was more dirty than hurt. But the tar tankers and some trucks were all to pieces. Toby and Percy were sent to help came as quickly as they could. Look here, Percy, exclaimed Toby. Whatever is that dirty object? That's, that's James, didn't you know? That's James's shape, but James is a splendid red engine. You never See his paint dirty. James pretended he hadn't heard. Toby 
and Percy cleared away the unhurt trucks and helped James home. The fat controller met them. Well, John, Percy and Joby, he turned to James. Fancy you letting your trucks run away. I am surprised. You're not fit to be seen. You must be clean at once. Joby shall have a new coat of paint. Please, sir, can Henrietta have one too? said Toby. It's uh, most certainly Joe. Oh, thank you, sir. She will be pleased. All James could do was watch Toby as he ran off happily with the news. Bertie's chase. Stop! Stop! Uh, I've got Thomas's passengers, wailed Bertie. Roaring up to the gates, it was no use. Edward was gone. Bother, said Bertie. Bother, Thomas is fine and not coming to work today. Why did I promise to help the passengers catch the train? That will do, Bertie, said his driver. I promise is a promise, and we must keep it. I'll catch Edward or bust, said, said Bertie. Oh, my gears and axles, he groaned, toiling up the hill. I'll never be the same bus again. Hooray! Hooray! I see him! cheered Bertie as he reached the top. Oh no, Edward's at the station. No, no, he's stopped at a crossing. Hooray! Hooray! Bertie tore down the hill. Well done, Bertie, shouted his passengers. Do it! Bertie skidded into the yard. Wait, wait, cried Bertie. He was just in time to see Edward pull away. I'm sorry, said Bertie. Never mind, said the passengers. After him quickly. Third time lucky, you know. Do you think we'll catch him at the next station, driver? There's a good chance, replied the driver. Our road keeps close to the line, and we can climb hills better than Edward. I'll just make sure. He spoke to the station master, Bertie, and the passengers waited impatiently. We'll do it this time, said the driver. Hooray, cried the passengers, as Bertie chased after Edward once more. This hill is too steep. This hill is too steep, grumbled the coaches. Edward snorted in front. They reached the top at last and ran smoothly into the station. <whistles> Whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. The guard blew his whistle. Edward's driver looked back, but the flag didn't wave. Then he heard Bertie. Everything seemed to happen at once, and the station master told the guard and the driver what had happened. I'm sorry about the chase, Bertie, said Edward. My fault, replied, replied Bertie. Late at junction. He didn't know about Thomas's passengers. Goodbye, Bertie. Went off whistled Edward. Three chairs for Bertie, called the passengers. Bertie raced back to tell Thomas that all was well. Thank you, Bertie, for keeping your promise, said Thomas. You're a very good friend indeed. Percy and the signal. Percy works in the yard at the big station. He loves playing jokes 
but they can get him into trouble. One morning, he was feeling very cheeky indeed. Hurry up, Gordon. The train's ready. Gordon thought he was late. <laughs> <laughs> Laughed Percy and showed him a train of dirty coal trucks. Gordon thought how to get back at Percy for teasing him. Next, it was James' turn. Stay in the shed today, James. If you drop a mat, we'll come and see you. Mmm, thought James. She jump on that knows I'm a fine engine. He wants me to pull a special train. James' driver and fireman could not make him move. The other engines grumbled dreadfully. They had to do James' work as well as their own. At last, the inspector arrived. Show up, Will James. You can't stay here all day. She top of that told me to stay here. He sent a message this morning. He did not. How could he? He's away for a week. Oh, said James. Oh, where's that Percy? Percy had wisely disappeared. When the fat controller came back, he was cross with James and Percy for calling so much trouble. But the next day, Percy was still being cheeky. I say, you engines, undertake some trucks to Thomas's junction. So top of that shows me especially. You must know, I'm a really useful engine. More likely, he wants you out of the way. Hunter James. Gordon looked across to James. <laughs> they were going to play a joke on Percy. James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals, but then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy thought flattered. And um, we had spoken of backing signals, put in, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James. No, thank you, James, said Percy. I know all about signals. Percy was a little worried. I wonder what packing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. He puffed crossly to his trucks and felt better. He came to the signal. Bother! It's a danger. The signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen this, that sort of signal before. Up down means go, and and uh, up means stop. So um, hmm. up a still must mean uh, go back. Oh, I know. It's one of those backing signals that Gordon told me about. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Away we go. Uh, 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 stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal. Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained. Oh, dear, said Percy. Let's get, let's start quickly b before they see us. He was too late. Gordon had seen everything. That night, the big engines talked about signals. They thought the subject was absolutely hilarious. Percy thought they were being very silly indeed. Percy proves a point. Percy worked hard at the new harbor. The workmen needed stone for their building. Toby helped, but sometimes the load of stone were too heavy, and Percy had to fetch them for himself. Sometimes he'd see Thomas. Well, Jan Percy, Sir Thomas is very pleased with us. 
an airfield was close by. Percy heard the airplanes zooming overhead all day, but the noisiest of all was a helicopter. Silly thing, said Percy. Why can't it go and buzz somewhere else? One day, Percy stopped at the airfield. Hello? Hello, said Percy. Who are you? I'm Harold. Who are you? I'm Percy. What really great arms you've got. They are nice arms, said Harold. I can hover like a bird. Don't you wish you I could hover? They're certainly not. I like my rails, thank you. I think railways are slow, said Harold. They're not much use and quite out of date. He whirled his arms and buzzed away. Percy found Toby at the quarry. I say, Toby, that Harold, that stuck up whirly but thing, says I'm slow and out of date. Just let him wait. I'll show him. He collected his trucks and started off, still fuming. Soon, they heard a familiar buzzing. Percy, whispered his driver. There's Harold. He's not far ahead. Let's race him. Yes, yes, let's, said Percy. Percy pounded along. The truck screamed and swayed. Well, I be a ding-dong dang, said the driver. There was how the race was on. Go it, Percy, he yelled. You're gaining. Percy had never been allowed to run fast before. He was having the absolute time of his life. Hurry, 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 he panted to the trucks. We, we don't want to. We don't want to, they grumbled. It was no use. Percy was bucketing along with flying wheels, and Harold was high and alongside. The fireman shoveled for dear life. Well done, Percy, shouted the driver. We're gaining. We're going ahead. Oh, good boy. Good boy. A distant signal warned them that the harbor was near. Thanks, God, please. The driver carefully checked the train's headlong speed. They rolled under the main line and halted on the wharf. Oh, dear, groaned Percy. I'm sure we've lost. The fireman scrambled to the cab roof. We've won! We've won! He shouted. Harold's still hovering! He's looking for a place to land! Listen, boys, the fireman called. Here's a song for Percy. Said Harold the helicopter to a Percy, you are slow. Your railway is out of date and not much use, you know. But Percy and his stone trucks did the trip in record time, and we beat the helicopter on our own branch line. Percy loved it. Oh, oh thank you, he said. He liked that less, last line best of all, and was a very happy engine. And there's the other books that you could get back in the day. Well, that was fun. No, really, it was fun. <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe if this gets enough views, I'll go for this next. Or maybe the Thomas Bercy and the Dragon version. God. <laughs> oh my god, look. It's red. I didn't know I had this in there. Maybe it was a bookmark or something. I mean, I know this is kind of a child's book, not act the actual story. Why, why'd they name it after the Railway Series book? I mean, it is the same story, just... I mean, it's a much... It's not really dumbed down, but it's a much easier version of the story. I might read it or some other books that I have, um, but 
as of tonight, that's it. Good night.